Hello there. So today I'm doing a video that's been very, very highly requested. I am going to be drawing the same digital drawing in both Photoshop and Krita. Is it Krita? I hope it is. I'm not sure. Before we begin, I would just like to quickly say if you could please give this video a thumbs up if you do enjoy it because it really helps me out. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already and hit that little bell icon down below because that will notify you every time I upload just in case YouTube decides to not show you my videos when they're uploaded because it likes to do that. Thank you, YouTube. Now, I have never used Krita. In fact, I've never actually used Paint Tool Sci either, which is a paid program. And these are two main drawing programs that a lot of digital artists that I know actually use. The only other digital programs that I've used really are um, Corel Paint Shop Pro, um, I've used GIMP, I have also used Procreate, of course. But people keep suggesting Krita. I've known about it for about two years now and I'm very excited to really give it a go. Also, this title is very much so inspired by Lavender Town because she had a $1,000 Photoshop versus Microsoft paint video title and I just thought that was a really cool title so I have taken that. I will leave a link to hers in the description, it's very much so inspired by her so thank you for that. Now lately I have been making a real effort to try and learn colour theory because I never had an art class, you know I never went to art school, I went to school for computer science, I did not, I did not get an art degree, I didn't do any high school art classes, none of that stuff so for me stuff like colour theory was something that I had to learn by myself and it was only up until a few months ago that I actually decided to really start doing that. Now many of you know that I love Skillshare, I've worked with them in the past many times, I've used their website for years um, and one class in particular I took a few months ago was a colour theory class by Gabrielle Bricky and it was a quite a short class but I learned so much in it about complementary colours and to tiry colours and just so much stuff that I just really opened my eyes. So I took that class. So if you'd like to take the class, I will leave a link to Skillshare in the description. They've kind of given me a link for you to take two free months of classes. Skillshare is sponsoring this video, so thank you Skillshare. So as you may or may not know, Photoshop is my all-time favourite digital drawing programme. It's what I've used most. I've used it for five years now. Uh, before then I used Paint Shop Pro for three years, so I've been digitally painting for about eight years now. I have quite a bit of experience with a few different things in regards to that, but I have never used like a solely, solely made drawing program. So this is why I was very, very excited to try this out. So starting off with Photoshop, I just use mostly the default brushes. In fact, that's what I use, to be honest, in most of my pieces is just the default brushes. I probably should branch out a little bit more than that, but I'm quite a creature of comfort in regards to my 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 brushes. So um, I used pretty much the default brushes in this. I really went above and beyond with this piece in regards to experimenting with color because I really wanted to take a classic Snow White piece and make it more my own and really colorize it. Um, you may notice, by the way, a few different weird things during this speed paint because I'm actually, t I teach classes on Skillshare myself, I have a digital art class, I have a watercolour class, there's actually going to be a class on this particular uh, piece about lighting and colour and just composition and stuff like that so keep an eye out for that if you do want to you know try out Skillshare make sure you follow my profile on there and then you can check out this class when it's up hopefully next week. Now last time I did this people were saying to me oh Photoshop isn't a thousand dollars, you're stupid. I would just like to clear this up, first of all. Photoshop cannot be purchased anymore. You can only get it for a minimum of $10 a month as a subscription. You can no longer purchase and own Photoshop. It's just impossible, they don't offer that anymore. When you could purchase it, and when I purchased it back in 2013, I had a student discount. I managed to purchase it for $250 or around that, around that. Um, and you know, that was a good deal at the time, but that was because I had a student discount. When Photoshop, the extended full version, was available without discounts, it was in a $1,000 program. And the reason why I call this $1,000 Photoshop is because that's what Adobe actually values Photoshop at. That's how much they priced it at. So, you know, it's not, it's not, a cheap $10 program, it is worth $1,000, hence why, that's why I call it that, okay? So just to clear that up. By the way, if anyone is wondering, I use a small Bamboo Intuos D2 
digital tablet. I love it, it works great. I got it for like $30 on eBay. Um, and it, I love all Wacom tablets. I think they're great. Now, a little bit about this piece. Um, I wanted something with a little bit of a purple and yellowish, greenish feel to it. I basically wanted to completely recreate this classic vintage old Disney scene and somewhat make it my own, make it a little bit different. Um, I did stick with mainly the default brushes purely because that's personal preference and overall I'm very very happy with it. I really wanted to work a lot on my lighting and focus on like shadows and I talked through that a lot when I was drawing it and I've never really worked too much with trying to blur some of the the parts of the piece like having the main focal point which is obviously the house in focus while the background and like the foreground is like blurred outwards um this is still something i feel that i'm i'm you know want to practice with a little bit more but i'm really really happy with this it's my dream to be able to somehow create more disney stylized pieces i've seen like you know i've gone to disneyland i've gone to disney world and i see the disney galleries that they have with artists that are licensed to sell disney pieces and it's just it's so it's so them this they have such a distinct style and I, I think that being able to do something like that would be amazing so i've decided that over the next year i'm going to really really work on my portfolio and try to make it you know really have a proper unique portfolio that is all mine um this isn't necessarily part of that this is just me you know making something a little bit different but that's where my mind is at Again, use the default brushes. I used some purples and greens and blues in this, as you can see. I really heavily went on with the shadows, as you can hopefully tell there. Um, and yeah, I had a real, I had a lot of fun making this. Now for Krita, I opened it up, and of course, the first thing when you're trying out a new program, you kind of like, I don't know how to use this, but it's very much similar in flow to like stuff like Photoshop. Um, so it wasn't too difficult to translate from Photoshop to Krita. Also, I did a bit of research and found out, which was very exciting. You can actually use your .abr Photoshop brushes in Krita, which is exciting because I love to download and try new brushes, even though I kind of tend to stick to the same ones. I think it's great that you can also use those in Krita. Krita is made solely for drawing, whereas Photoshop is made for like more so for photo editing but also drawing so it's kind of like a, a packaged thing that can do so many different things photoshop is really the industry standard it's what most people use in you know disney it's kind of the photoshop is the standard that they use for their digital like background painters and stuff like that like dream job just saying because it does have flexibility that a lot of other programs don't however for me I don't tend to do anything too fancy. I'm sort of someone that needs pen pressure, layers, uh, you know, change the colour balance a little bit. Um, I like to be able to just modify things if I want, like select them and move them. Something I've really been getting into lately is figuring out how to use like the pen tool, the lasso tool, in order to like fill colours. And I'm not sure if that's something that's as decent on Krita, but I could be wrong because again, I'm very new to it, there's still features I'm learning about. But I think the core things that you need in a drawing program and the stuff that I pretty much use it for, I could easily translate that into Krita. I did find the brush options in Krita very, very impressive. I think they're very flexible. I think they have a lot of different options and types of brushes. I tried to use similar brushes on Krita that I used on Photoshop, so they kind of looked as similar as they could. But I was excited over the brush options that they had, so I, you know, I was a little bit experimental with them, just saying. Now, the only issue that I found I had in Krita, which may be something that you can change in the options, is for some reason, the colours in Krita were so much more muted than they were in Photoshop. But they're not sort of supposed to be muted because once you save the image, it looks totally fine. Like, what you're watching now with the screen recording, it shows it how it's supposed to be, the colours they're supposed to be, but when I was actually physically working in it, I took a photo, as you can see here. This one is how it appeared to me in Krita, and this one is how it appeared to me in Photoshop, the same sort of image that I was working on, the same colours. I'm not sure why that was, because as I say, the screen recorder seemed to capture it as the colours it was meant to be. 
but it was really strange um, but maybe that's an option I can turn off the only other thing really that I noticed was that every time you're trying to paint the mouse cursor is over it as well like in Photoshop when you're drawing all you can see is the little circle of the brush that you're using whereas in this you've got the little brush shape as well as the cursor on top and again maybe that's something you can turn off but that was sort of what I noticed as a beginner overall I really liked Krita. I thought it was an excellent program and I'm really excited to try some more pieces in it. I absolutely would give it a go. Again, I'm going to keep it downloaded on my computer. I'm going to keep drawing with it. I think it's really, really, it's nice for artists to have a free program that they use. So I highly recommend it if you are someone that can't afford or doesn't want to spend money every month on something like Photoshop. So which piece do you prefer? Do you prefer Krita or do you prefer Photoshop? Also, if you use one of the other programs, which is your favourite and why, I'm very curious to know. I'm so excited to finally publish this class. It's all about lighting and shadows and colours and just it, it, about just like making fantasy sort of scenery to make it your own. So I'm very excited. Should hopefully be up in the next week or two. So keep an eye out. Follow my profile on Skillshare and you will know exactly when it comes out. Thank you so much again to Skillshare for working with me on this video. Also, thank you to Gabrielle Bricky as well. Like her classes are so helpful. I learned so much about colour in general um, and I've learned so much about portraits and procreate she just does everything so she's awesome but yes make sure you check them out they have over 22,000 classes on art design illustration business photography web design there's just so much on there and i highly recommend it and yes thank you so much for watching the video i hope you enjoyed it make sure you give it a thumbs up take care of yourselves and i will see you in the next video